Hey, today we're going to talk about Postdoc Identify and Alias. Uh, Postdoc Identify enables you to link events on the same user across uh, different sessions, devices, platforms. Uh, it's very helpful to get a full picture of how a specific user is interacting with your app uh, over time and over different devices. Uh, it's typically it's typically something you only use on the front end. Um, the reason this is is that when Postog initializes uh, on the front end, what we do is we create an anonymous ID for the user, and we use this anonymous ID to capture events, and we continue using this anonymous ID until uh, you're able to identify who the user is. So perhaps you know once they've logged in or signed in, and you have their email or user ID. On the other hand, when you're capturing events in the back end, you always have to provide a distinct ID for the user. Uh, and so by definition, you already know who they are and there's no concept of an, an anonymous ID. Uh, so this is why identify is something you, you call in the uh, client side apps. Right, uh, let's jump into our sample project. So uh, I've created here a, a brief sample project where a user can sign in, um, they can enter in their email, they can enter in a password, um, and then it takes you to a dashboard with just a random number generator. Uh, and this random, random number generator uh, calls an API. Um, right, Postog has already been set up for this app. So if we go to the uh, activity tab in Postog and we see the events, we see that all the events captured here are captured with an anonymous ID. And this is the anonymous ID that's automatically generated by Postdoc. Let's go ahead now and um, and use Postdoc Identify in our code. So the best place to call Identify is when, as soon as you know who the user is. And this is typically after they've logged in or signed up. So over here, I have a sign in button. Uh, and let's assume that you know once the user cl uh, clicks the button and they've already been authenticated um, and they've been authenticated successfully, uh, we know who they are. So here we want to call posthog.identify. Now you have to provide an argument um, for the identify call, and this is this is this should be the user's distinct ID. Typically, what we recommend you use here is either the user's email or their um, or the unique ID on your database. The important thing here is that this ID should be unique to that user. If it's not unique, you'll end up uh, accidentally combining the same, uh, different users into the same uh, profile in Postdoc. So that won't be helpful. Okay, so now that we've added Postdoc Identify, let's save our changes uh, and let's go and sign in again. Okay, so we go to our app. Let's enter in a uh, name, max the hedgehog, email max at posthog.com, and just a random password. We click sign in. Uh, and now our identify call should have been um, should have been called. Let's just generate some events. And now when we go to the posthog activity tab, we'll see that events are starting to be captured. Instead of the anonymous ID, we have now the user's email. So all the events are are captured using uh, are identified now, and this also combines any previous events. So, for example, the ones here captured with anonymous ID, it combines them into this into the same user profile. Now let's implement a postdoc reset, um, and this is something that you want to implement when a user signs out. So, when a user signs out, it probably means that a different uh, user is going to sign in. And you don't want to associate any previous uh, events with a new user, um, a new different user, let's say. Uh, and so to do this, you go to your sign out. Uh, let's go to our sign out button. And here we will call postdoc.reset with a, a, a an argument true to reset the device ID. Uh, and what this is going to do is just generate a new anonymous ID. Uh, and not use the old one. Uh, and this makes sure that um, uh, a future user is going to have its own unique ID. So once we've implemented that, we save our changes. We can go back to our app. Uh, we could log in again. Let's say Max the Hedgehog. 
Nexapostum.com, sign in. Um, and now what happens when we click sign out is it's going to call post hog reset. Let's just refresh the, few, the page a few times to generate new events. And when we go to our post hog activity tab, we should see that we have a new anonymous ID for a user. There we go. So you can see here we have a different a new anonymous ID. The old events are associated with the, with the person we identified, but now future events are associated with a different anonymous ID. The last thing we're going to talk about is alias. Alias is a feature by uh, by Postdoc which enables you to assign uh, multiple distinct IDs to the same user. So for example, you could use a user's email as a distinct ID, but you also may want to use their um, their database ID, uh, that, that's the, their ID that's in your database uh, as a distinct ID. And the reason you may want to do this is, let's say on the front end, you have easy access to their email. Uh, and so you prefer to capture events using their uh, email as, a, as their distinct ID. But on the back end, there may be some parts of your code where you only have access to their uh, user ID in your database. And you know you may not want to make an, uh, a database call to fetch their email or something, and it's just easier to use their database ID. So in this case, it's helpful to, to uh, capture events with either their email or their uh, database ID, whichever one is easier for you, uh, depending on your context. Okay, let's go ahead and implement post hog alias. Before we do, I want to show you the code for uh, our API route. And this is our API that's generating our random number. As you can see, we pass in the user ID uh, as an argument here. Um, and we then use this user ID to capture an event to post hog. Um, the important thing to call out here is that we don't have these as email. Uh, and so this this would be a use case for when you would want to use alias, um, because we still want to associate uh, this event with the same uh, user we identified on the client. Um, and so right now, when we call this API route, um, and it's capturing these number generator events, if we go to our post hog dashboard, we see that these um, number generator called events are associated with an ID one two three. Uh, and this is just the placeholder ID I've used for the sample app. And so this is currently not linked to the max at postdoc.com. Um, so let's go ahead and implement postdoc alias. We're going to do it here on the sign in button. Um, you can call postdoc alias either on the, on the back end or the front end. It doesn't matter where you call it. So let's call postdoc.alias. And you need to provide uh, two, two arguments to this, to this function call. The first argument is the alias, um, the alias you want to use. So in this case, you want to use the user ID. And the second argument is the original, the user's original ID. Um, the way you can think about it is the original ID is the one, the one you use with post hog identify. Um, and so in, this, in our case, we used email, so the email is the original ID. Um, Let's go ahead and we save our changes. Uh, and now let's go to our app. Uh, we sign in so that the alias function will be called and we can start generating a random number uh, to call to capture our events on the back end. Now, when we go to our activity tab and we, and we refresh the events, we can see here that alias has been called and even though um, in the number generator, number generator called event, we see that the ID is one, two, three. If we click in on this um, ID, we can see here actually that this is a user with multiple IDs. And if we click on this button here, we can see all the different IDs for the user. So here is the max at postdoc email distinct ID, which we used for the identify call. Here is their uh, user ID, which we passed in one to three, and, and the other three are um, our post hog anonymous IDs that have been created for it. And if we click on this user's events, we can now see uh, both the events from the back end uh, and the front end events. 
Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, do comment on the uh, doc, the docs page for identify, uh, and we'll be sure to answer you.